With CQC, I've had a lot of people since I've come away and I've gone in, I've looked into another, uh, well, let's just say I set a whole load of interviews at one point earlier this year for a load of different care um, companies. And some of the things I'd heard about with CQC especially is that maybe the procedure they use, the way they do it, maybe needs critiquing, needs changing. Uh, where do you lie with that, Mark, in, like, in terms of, is it, does it work? Obviously, we used to have, like, for those that don't know, we used to have uh, C-Sky, then it got over to CQC. It's been going on for a while, but do you think it works, the procedure itself, Milo? When they come around and do it, do you feel like they understand what you're trying to, trying to do? And obviously, you're somebody similar to me that does think out of the box, does want to, sort of throw in these uh, dare and challenge the status quo a little bit. But I know some CQC, they are a little bit off put by it and they want to see the kind of tick box be done first, if you will. And they're not really looking at the connecting part of it uh, with people. But where do you sit with that yourself, mate? Yeah, no, I completely agree with you. I think sadly it is a tick box exercise. And yeah, like yourself, I like to do things differently and you know, as opposed to just doing a generic tick box supervision or appraisal is actually do something different. And mm -hmm. but they don't like it. I think they just like everybody to be standard. Um, you know, I, since the whole pandemic and coronavirus, I've noticed that they haven't really spoken out. They've not really been a, at the forefront of voicing concerns around care homes and raising that awareness of care as being skilled and professional. And for me, that's disappointing because they're the regulator. Um, I do, I do think they only get a snapshot in time. You know, as a service, you're there 365 days of a year, but they come in one day for a few hours. And I think I used my last ins inspection as a good example. We were rated good before um, they came in, and she said that she would only be there a couple of hours. She was doing a return to good. Um, inspection and I was like the service is completely different since I took over it's a whole new staff team our ethos our visions our values have all changed you know what the service users are doing is completely different you know they've gone from going out two three times a week to going out two three times a day you know we've now got a cook we've got domestic you know the feedback from families is 100% better but I don't know I think she just focused on what we were doing and she even said to me that if this was a normal super, normal um, inspection, she would have given us outstanding. But because the changes I'd made weren't in place for 18 months, she couldn't give that. And yeah. I remember I was annoyed about it. And I, I said to her, I was like, if I wasn't doing something right, and you know, and the service the care wasn't there, the service users, you know, weren't happy. I said you wouldn't be giving me good and saying, oh, it's not been in place for 18 months but otherwise we would have given you requires improvement. You would have just given me requires improvement. It should work both ways. But I completely agree with what you said. There's services out there that I know I've got friends that work in those care homes that have outstanding and they say that, you know, there's nothing outstanding about them. Um, and I do believe that larger organisations with multiple services benefit a lot more because I think they get outstanding in one particular service. I think they then harness on what was outstanding and they just replicate it through all their other care homes or the other services. So then when the inspector comes into another one, they're all doing the same thing. And I think sure. you lose that personalization. And I know there's one, one of the largest elderly providers and I won't name them. Um, I know somebody works in their quality team and they said that every care home is so rigid and it's a good friend of mine. And she said like, even down to the meals, there's no choice. The menu is the same in every service. And they've got over 500 services up and down the UK. So there is no personalization. Whereas like in my service, we, we review that menu once a month. You know, the residents have a choice of, you know, what meals there are, you know, what they want, what they like, what they don't like. Um, and I think that's what it's about. It's all about personalization. But I think, sadly, the CQC like that structure and I don't know, they obviously have a tick box that they have to go by, but I do think it needs review and I do think, sadly, they've brought in a lot of people that are kind of ex-military, ex-police is what we're seeing now. So I think it's a lot more focused on targets and meeting things. Whereas I think the days of Sea Sky, where it was more about the care and spending time, getting to know the staff and feedback from staff and residents, I don't think we're seeing that as much. And I know during my last um, inspection, they spoke to me, they spoke to the newest member of staff, and I spoke to one resident um, and one family member, whereas I don't think that's enough. You know, I think you need mm. to be speaking to all the residents. At the end of the day, that's their home. That's what we're there 
four mm-hmm. and I think if you haven't got time to speak to every resident in a 13 bed care home you know something's going seriously wrong but yeah no I agree and and you know you, you talk about a couple of hours I mean and, and it's, it's interesting you mention that about C Sky because my memories when I first got into care the first inspection I ever remember getting, it was crazy. They were there for like two days um, and I, they had three people. So they had one person doing all the books, all the record keeping, if you will. They had another person that would go out with one of the support workers doing maybe one, whatever they were doing on that day. Like they might have been going out playing snooker, doing some shopping, but they went around with them. They just said, we'll just chill in the back. You guys go ahead and do what you want to do. And then the other person was just in the house and they were just, I guess, observing just how a kind of natural day shift would work. But they weren't really interfering or asking questions. They were just making notes. And in the follow up day, they just done all these uh, a crazy amount of interviews with everybody, uh, including residents. And, and that was very thorough, I felt at the time, uh, was extremely thorough because they were watching. And I wish... I wish today that this would be the case is when an inspector comes in that they watch how people interact with the guys we support, those connections, like why are you doing that? What what impact is that making? Like those little things that you can't always capture on a document. You know, it just doesn't work like that. You can you can sit as much as you want and type as much as you want, but you ain't gonna get a true reflective, transparent of what is going on with watching two people out there that are just having this amazing connective experience. But unfortunately it gets missed. And uh, like you say, the other thing to it is that, listen, there are certain managers out there that are, they they can kind of, they're they're really good, almost like salesmen. Uh, So when a CQC inspector comes in, you know, they've got, they know exactly what they've got to get out when they've got to get it out. And it may be that particular day. I mean, how many times, Mark, have we heard, uh, a home gets good and then, I don't know, six, seven months later, it's been shut down because of all this crazy abuse that's going on. And you're like, well, clearly that wasn't picked up on the day. And, and, and why? Because these people are smart. You know, they know if the CQC inspector comes in, they're not going to start doing what they normally do. Uh, people act differently. And that's just sometimes it's a natural thing. You know, when we used to get one in, people all of a sudden they're flying around like headless chickens, you know, because they're, they're kind of scared by it for some, you know, but it's, it's normal. But you know what I mean? It, you can manipulate it somewhat. Um, and and I, I'm not sure why they haven't sort of spoken more to people like yourself in those positions to say, look, what can you disguise? What should we look out for more? Blah, blah, blah. Like why they haven't had that kind of coordination with us, I don't know, because it certainly would help. And, uh, and man, if they're using ex-military and all the rest of it, then <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> gold help us i would say because you've got to have somebody that knows the system well and then you can i I guess you can look out for it better yeah no and something you touched on regarding kind of the inspection i don't understand there's obviously five domains that they assess against but one of them being caring but you can get good in that but two outstandings in maybe safe and well led and you get outstanding overall and i think for me personally i don't think if you can't get outstanding in caring, then I don't think you should have outstanding in anything because mm-hmm. ultimately that's why we're there. Sure. And I don't yeah. say why, you know, and I would love to know what happens if you get outstanding in all four other domains, but requires improvement in caring. Do you still then get outstanding? Because actually <laughs> you're fundamentally not doing the job that we're all there to do, mm. but, yeah. which doesn't make sense. But yeah, I, I don't know. I, I mean, I've, written to the CQC across the years and I know other care home managers and staff have and you know I've always said you know I'd be happy you know they do a lot of bank positions but they always say your experiences and you haven't got enough experience Mm -hmm. I kind of think well I don't know how you know I've been doing it 15 years I don't know how I haven't got enough experience Mm -hmm. but it makes sense but but then I see somebody and I've got a friend that's an inspector and she's worked in care for like two years and I think well how do you have more experience than Mm -hmm. I do but it doesn't make sense and then you see social workers that are now part-time inspectors and I've got a friend that was a social worker who is now part-time social worker part-time but she's never worked in care she's never actually she went to university and I met her prior outside obviously the care industry so she went to university got a social work qualification obviously did work experience and I think she did two weeks in a setting but is now an inspector and I kind of think you definitely don't have more experience than I do but but I think yeah, the that's... social worker, the CQC obviously see that as a more 
professional and skilled role and they probably see that totally wrong yeah (laughs) yeah Uh, and and we'll touch on that in a second but you're you're right like these people i mean i i can only um make a a sort of reflecting on it is is like for, for people that maybe are not familiar but it's like you you have a drama teacher now at school i was very much i wanted to be a an actor as i got older but you know when i was doing drama from my teacher the thing the teacher didn't really tell me about was the whole business side of it and how ruthless and uh, you know strict it is because basically they'd gone on through the education system they've gone to university and then straight back into a school again uh, without having that kind of industry knowledge um, and which is exactly the same thing here like how you can how you can mark people when you haven't actually worked in it i do not have any idea but i know obviously it does go on and and with the social workers it's sometimes even worse um especially more of late uh, you know the again that's changed due to funding as well we used to have community nurses and used to have the same social worker at least <laughs> for a couple of years at least now often it's mainly your social worker is the services themselves there is no named person even though they'll give you a name there is no such thing i don't know what happens with you mark but like towards the end of my time we never had a thing where um yeah yearly review was ever was ever attended by a multiple amount of people because that just wasn't a thing anymore it used to be used to have the doctors the maybe the psychiatrist comes in the social worker, maybe a community nurse, you know, all these people, the parents, you have as much input as you can. But now that in the end, it just become a piece of paper. It was something you fill in and send back. And that was it. Um, I don't know if that's still the same with you guys. Yeah, no, I completely agree. And I think I remember back when I very first started doing reviews and it looked at kind of what the person was doing, what they wanted to do, where they were going. Whereas now it just kind of focuses on, are they good? Are they not so good? What's working well? What's not working well? And that's it. And it's like, a half hour sit down meeting as opposed to <laughs> being like half a day where it used to be but yeah I mean I yeah. even get it now they're like oh the review's going to be on x day x time can you let the parents know and I'm like well can't you let the parents know you're the one hosting the meeting you know I'm just yeah. in this D but you end up being the admin and they just kind of dump it all on you and expect you to take over but yeah we don't have any named social workers it's now a duty worker and they pick up the case and then bank it straight after which you know, isn't helpful, especially if you've got kind of safeguards or concerns and then you're speaking something, you have to go right back to the beginning of the story with this person, quite often with the resident there, who often a lot of the time doesn't enjoy talking about kind of the negatives in their life. But you have yeah, to exactly. It's always time and time again to each different social worker. But Yeah, because often those things, the, this is the problem sometimes as well, is that, um, you know, uh, most records, books, care folders, when you go through them, unfortunately, it's mainly problem solving. It's mainly problems, issues, and there's nothing kind of positive on them half the time, which is why, you know, a person centered planning does help. But when you're talking about, you just mentioned that, like some people, they don't want to go into a, a meeting and have that thing spoken about themselves. You know, it, it, like, would we do that? Would we be comfortable? No, of course we wouldn't. So why would they be any different? But there is that mentality sometimes. And uh, one of the things, Mark, like I got a few emails in ahead of time um, from some parents that asked some questions. And I did reply at the time, but I think it's worth bringing up. But these were people, these were parents with, um, you know, they had children still living at home. I think the ages of 19 and 20. They just kind of was leaving, leaving school um, because it's a lot older age um, in, in learning disability. But they were saying when they had this new um, social worker come around, what they were looking at was, well, where's your where's your activity planner for the person? And they were like, well, we kind of never have had one. We He kind of gets up and, you know, he chooses to do this. He tells us this. And, but they wanted to see it on paper. They wanted to see this, that and the other. And the, you know, my main reply to that is the only reason they ever do that, in my experience, is, is it's all costing and money. That's what they're looking at. They're looking at ways of, well, he doesn't go out here, so that must mean we don't need to put anything there. He doesn't need anybody. If he's not going out, why need carers? And, and that's what they were trying to do. And I kind of think that's so wrong sometimes. And they really miss, like we were talking about earlier, with the, the connecting part, that 
actually somebody just sitting indoors watching their telly with somebody 